So it's been a couple of weeks since I purchased the MacBook Air, the M1 MacBook Air, which I really appreciate and really like. I mean, I've done several videos on this. If you have not seen them, there'll be links in the description below, not only from taking it out, trying to figure out how to use it, and then a review. And now today I'm gonna to talk about why I'm actually not using this as much as my iPad Pro that I've had for quite a while. This is slightly surprising on one hand, but not so much on the other. I think I'm using it for different needs than you might. So I'm actually gonna tell you what I think is better for you because just because I'm using the iPad does not mean that the MacBook Air is not a better selection for you. And we'll talk all about that right after this. this, this What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name's Travis and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below. But for now, let's just get into the video. So like I said before, I've done multiple videos on the MacBook M1 series of MacBooks, and we have some new MacBooks coming out later this year. So make sure you hit subscribe if you wanna keep up with that, or if you wanna watch some of those older videos after this video. There's some pretty cool ones, even with a surprise guest in the very first video. But I'll be right up front. The reason I purchased the MacBook was to be a replacement for my iPad for editing this channel. And that has a lot to do with why I'm not using it nearly as much as my existing iPad Pro. This might differ for you, which is why I'm gonna tell you the pros and cons of each, and the people that I think match up best for each product. Because just because one does something better for me does not mean it will do it better for you. Now I could match up iPad Pro to MacBook Pro, but it's really not necessary. If you look at the pricing between these two, they're actually kind of similar, the 12.9 uh, iPad Pro versus the uh, MacBook Air M1. Uh, but then you start adding things like 16 gigs of RAM on the MacBook and then things like the, uh, the pencil and the magic keyboard and then you're over that price but they start around the same price and you know for that i decided to use these two pieces of hardware and to be honest like i really could switch out this ipad pro for almost any ipad for the simple reason that most of the things that i'm going to talk about this ipad are not just about the pro but about iPads in general. Now, of course, both of them are part of the Apple ecosystem, meaning if you have other Apple products, they're going to match up great with either one of these. You can take phone calls on both, you can send text to both, you can drop files from your phone to either one, like all that's pretty much the same. As a matter of fact, the vast majority of the functionality is very, very similar on both, especially since the M1 now can uh, load and use apps from the App Store. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But I believe that most people, at least a lot of people at home, can actually use an iPad over the MacBook. And there are some reasons for this, but let's go into kind of the differences and the pros and cons of each. Now, when it comes to the iPad Pro, I picked up the larger version. I used to have the 11 inch in the 2018 version of the iPad Pro, but now I have the 12.9. And I love the great screen uh, real estate. It's a great picture, it's super big. I can see everything. It works perfect for me. Now, um, for video editing, this is awesome because it gives me a lot more room to work, which is what I use 99% uh, of this iPad for. And the fact that it's touch is amazing. Of course, all the apps that are on the App Store for this thing run beautifully, as you would expect. And quite frankly, nowadays, apps in the App Store really kind of cover at least 80 to 90% of most people's use cases. Now, if we talk about iPads in general, not just the Pro, this also, of course, applies to the Pro, but just regular iPads as well, a lot of what people use, especially at home, can be accomplished on an iPad. I, I really consider iPads to be the perfect TV companion. And what I mean by that is, without any kind of keyboard case or anything, this is very easy to carry around. Now, of course, again, this is the larger version. It's a little bit wonky to have a 12.9, but all the other ones are much smaller than this. The iPad mini, I think, is perfect. You know, when you're watching TV and you wanna look up something on Google or check your email or Instagram, forget your phone with that small screen. Take out your iPad and start doing some things. Plus, you know, you can download an app and likely re remote control your entire TV or music or whatever you want to directly from this. I really like the form factor of tablets simply because not only is the touchscreen so, uh, we're so used to touchscreens now with our smartphones, but the reality is we don't necessarily even need the keyboards much anymore. 
Now, if you're into production and stuff, we'll talk about that here a little bit later on if you want to get some productivity done. But by and large, there's really no reason you can't use an iPad for most things. As a matter of fact, I made a video, I think it was last year, that talked about how you can take an iPad and replace your laptop. And I feel kind of the same way today, even more so with more professional apps uh, coming out every single day for iPads and iPhones, that it just doesn't seem like there's a lot you can't do with an iPad. Now, if you're trying to get productivity done, you can buy something like the uh, Magic Keyboard, where the keys are absolutely fantastic. If you don't want to spend that much money, and I don't blame you, there are tons of keyboard alternatives. I mean, a Bluetooth keyboard in and of itself will work. The pencil, absolutely fantastic. Again, depending on what you're doing on your tablet, this can be uh, basically like a mouse replacement. But quite frankly to me, touch is the win. You can't get that right now on any of the MacBooks. And for me, the speed and ease of touch, and since we're so used to touch screens now, are what put this thing in my hand every single day. Battery life, of course, is great. It's gonna last me all day, day and a half, even if I'm working really hard on it, have it full brightness, editing videos, whatever. It's gonna last me all day, so I'm not worried about that. USB-C, of course, this is on both, but USB-C has given me the ability to transfer files to this thing super fast, especially from my SD card. Again, this is basically my editing machine, and since I've become so good with LumaFusion, it's so fast and Touch editing, that is editing with your finger, hand, or the pencil is absolutely fantastic. And I just have not been able to find a better way to edit than touch. And for me, that's kind of the number one reason why I've been going back to the iPad Pro over my Mac. Not because it's so much more powerful, which I don't even think it is, especially considering the M1 is slightly uh, a newer processor than the uh, A12Z uh, that's in this thing but that I am faster with touch. And that includes using normal apps and such as well. And the vast majority of things you're trying to get done on any type of electronic device can be done on an iPad. There's so many apps out there. Most everything else works just on the web. There's very little you're missing. So if you're not trying to get done a whole bunch of productivity, but even some you can do, an iPad just makes sense to me. And I've actually been saying this for years. I haven't had a laptop that I've used for my personal use at home for years. Just don't need it. it takes up too much space. And up until this point, that is until the uh, MacBook Air came out, they weren't they were kind of heavy and clunky. The battery life wasn't great. I wasn't really all that impressed. And what I needed was done on the iPad Pro and even the iPad mini. Enter the MacBook Air. This thing with the M1 chip and now 16 gigs of RAM as I purchased this one, uh, has changed my mind on laptops largely because not only is this thing light, thin, beautiful, the screen is amazing. I talked about this in my review and when I first started using it, this thing's fast. The M1 chip and the ability that it has given laptops is incredible. I've done tons of videos about the M1 chip. You need to subscribe if you haven't already seen these videos because I talk about it in depth and why this chip is so important, not just to Apple, but to all of us. Like why is it an important processor? Not just because of how fast it is, but how incredibly powerfully efficient it is with the battery. So yes, I can finally get through an entire day easily on the battery life of this Air. It's stupid quick. It's a full operating system. Now, for some of you, that's important. There might be some things you feel like you can't do in an iPad that you need a full operating system of some sort, like Mac OS. Well, of course, obviously the Air is gonna cover you there. Now, I've covered some of the usability things from a Windows user perspective, that's mine, on some of these videos. You wanna make sure you watch those videos if you've not already seen them. But what I've been able to tell you is this, it's been a fabulous experience. It's super fast, it boots up so fast, Everything about Mac OS just seems to work really well. And while not everything is incredibly intuitive to me, it all works and I can appreciate that. I can just appreciate that, thank you. Now, of course, while you can't expand the storage directly in this laptop this year, unlike the iPad where you have really no option, you can at least use a USB-C um, hard drive to attach to your MacBook. Now, you could technically put a USB-C drive on your iPad, but for me, that kind of, takes away the fact that it's supposed to be a portable device, like really easy to pick up in tablet mode. It just doesn't make sense to me. So at least with a laptop, it makes a little bit more sense to have an SD uh, hard drive that you can plug right into the side of it. So if you need a little bit more uh, storage for whatever reason, especially if you're just using it for temporary storage to offload stuff from your computer, it makes sense and it works really well. Now for me, one of the things that I've talked about that I love on iPads, which are not on the MacBook is touch, a touch screen. Some of you are not gonna care about this, but for me, touchscreen is the next level of interaction between a human and a computer. And for me, the speed and the uh, immediacy of my 
desire for something to happen and for it to happen cannot be replaced by a mouse or a touchpad. Now, to be clear and to be fair, the touchpad on this is the best I've ever used on any laptop, period. So that's something. But still, for me, a touchscreen uh, or get out of here. Now, this is definitely one of the best laptops for its price. And now that it can run Windows, that's right. You've been wondering, when can I get Windows on this thing? Parallel has been updated. Uh, you have almost no excuse <laughs> to not get one of these because not only do you have the power of Mac OS, the power of the M1 chip, the battery that's crazy, you actually can now um, install Windows on this if you have certain apps that only work on Windows. And for me, at this point, you almost don't even need a Windows laptop because this thing does everything. And the build quality on this thing is quite impressive, especially for something that's $1,000 or under, depending on how you get it and if it's on sale. Um, I've just been completely impressed by this laptop, but I have not been using it. And it's not really the problem of it being a laptop so much as it is the missing touch, uh, the keyboard that I don't always need, and final cut. So here's where I'm gonna separate my use from probably yours. Now, if you need a laptop, this is the one. Like, as far as I'm concerned, that's it. It's a wrap, you don't need anything else. It can now do Windows, there really is no reason to get to not get it. But for me, I need something quick and fast when I wanna uh, edit these videos and upload them, I'm really fast on the iPad and touch helps. I'm still learning Final Cut, which is definitely one of the things that's slowing me down, but no matter how fast I get at Final Cut, I just don't see how I'm going to get to the level of productivity that I am on an iPad. Plus, it is just a little bit easier to carry around with me and take it wherever I need to when I don't necessarily need access to the keyboard. I just want to edit things. Listen, if you need a laptop, I'm telling you, the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, any of the M1 series of those, um, those laptops, and of course the upcoming uh, M1, M M1X and M2, they're gonna be the one. Now that you can install Windows, I can't say this enough, this is the laptop to get. The iPads are really for everyone else, the casual user, someone who wants to get something done, especially if they're just checking the internet and they want a bigger screen than their phone. As far as I'm concerned, I think the iPad actually covers the vast majority of the people watching this video, even if they don't think it does. You'd be surprised at what you can accomplish on an iPad. So I recommend you watch some of the MacBook videos I've done and the iPad video I've done just to see what you can accomplish with both. And as a matter of fact, I've even shown how you can do a lot of things with an Android phone. So if you can get, if you can replace basically a desktop with your smartphone, there's no doubt you can do it with an iPad. But at the end of the day, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. I believe most of you will be absolutely happy with an iPad or an iPad Pro. I think it solves most of the issues for most people and you don't necessarily need a laptop. You might be surprised, give it a shot. If you wanna see more about iPads and this particular MacBook and what I thought of them, I'll leave some links for videos here. Uh, but subscribe so you can catch the rest. I'll see you next time. Peace and love.